New patents came out a few weeks ago about Dodge's new F1 Aspire suspension that should appear in the next gen EVs, but not so fast. Solantis has already given us an indication of what suspension will be on the next gen EVs during their EV day last year. So it seems like this suspension won't be used on EVs like the Charger, the Horn, or the Durango. The only vehicle we have yet to see is the next gen Challenger, or dare I say, the Cuda EV, that'll be the world's fastest Dodge coming in 2024. And I feel this is where the new suspension will debut, and will be reserved for only the most expensive models. But what if I told you that this new patent also shows us how modes like GMC's Crowdwalk, Tesla's Cheetah Mode, and a version of GM's Magnetic Rock Control are also coming to Dodge. And I'm not stopping there. I'm bringing out all the suspension cradles, four wheel steering, eight aftershocks per vehicle, and 1700 horsepower quad motor EVs coming soon. So I'm cutting out all this patent's fluff and getting you to all the Dodge's hidden stuff. I went through all 23 pages of these patents, but I'm not gonna make you sit here and suffer through 23 minutes of engineering, blah, 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 blah. Now these patents will also apply to multiple brands. So that means Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Alfa Romeo, Maserati, pretty much all of Slender's brands can get this type of suspensions. So I get started with the basic suspensions because they're all three different ones and then ramp up to the F1 style that have all the new features. This will be the suspension for the ice and the basic EVs. You can tell by looking at the drones in the patent that this is the ice engine in the middle of this drawing and an EV motor on this drawing. Another thing to notice in these drawings is the struts. Now this particular one looks like an air strut. Now this is most likely the discontinued quadrilift system found on certain trim level Grand Cherokees, but that system was discontinued because of the chip shortage. Now whether or not this makes it other vehicles is anyone's guess. Now these struts look similar to the style that you normally see from Dodge and even the whole system looks similar to what you might find on the current generation Dodge cars. This suspension will only be used on any vehicle that has an ICE engine in it. I'll put it on the screen what a patent says about the suspension, but long story short, it was designed so that the same parts could be used regardless if there was an ICE engine with a transmission or EV motors. Basically, the electric motors were designed to be in the same locations as like the front wheel drive transmission or the rear diff, and that allows Solantis to use the same parts for ICE, plug-in hybrid and EV vehicles cutting down on parts. For example, an axle or control arm for your 400 horsepower inline six scat pack could be the same axle or control arm for somebody else's 400 horsepower EV scat pack or maybe a plug-in hybrid scat pack. Now we're working on these vehicles together which allows us to share some of the most costly components in a way never before done. So eight vehicles are now being created that will come to market in the next three to five years. Just saying. So now to the next suspension, and these ones are only designed to be used in EV only situations. The EV motors are mounted low. We have brakes attached to the EV motors, output shafts going to the front wheels, rack and pin steering system, and a sway bar that looks to be attached to the strut that is mounted in a horizontal configuration in the cradle. If we look at the cradle for the rear, it struts are mounted horizontally. The patent doesn't show how the struts are connected to the control arms, but I suspect they'll work in a cantilever setup similar to the next suspension I talk about. But I see this suspension being used on dual and maybe budget tri-motor EV setups. And then this next suspension I talk about could be used on tri-motor and even quad-motor setups. Now this suspension is designed to be used on the front and the rear of the vehicle. If you look at this diagram, the patent breaks the car down into three parts. The center unibody frame, the front cradle that holds your front suspension, and the rear cradle that holds your rear suspension. The front and rear cradle are designed to be identical, allowing Stellantis to use the same cradle, sway bar, leaf springs, EV motors, axles, shocks, front and rear. Now this will dramatically cut down on vehicle specific parts and allow Stellantis to be less affected by supply chain issues. Reducing their costs has been a priority for them because they said the EVs are expensive and they have to reduce costs in order to survive. The electrification that brings 50% additional costs against a, a conventional vehicle. So we have to digest 50% of additional cost. There is no way we can transfer 50% of additional cost to the final consumer because most part of the middle classes will not be able to pay for those new car sales. So we lose the customer, 
we lose the customer base and then we have to shrink the company, which is going to create, of course, social issues. This designer using the same parts on the front and the rear suspension is possible because the EV skateboard design allow all the batteries to be mounted down low in the middle of the vehicle. So no longer would a 500 pound Hellcat motor sit in the nose of your vehicle and throw a weight distribution. I suspect Dodge will make a big deal that the next gen EV cars will be the best balanced Dodge vehicles ever with a near 50-50 weight distribution front to rear. In case you was wondering, the Tesla vehicle that Dodge has to beat with the world's fastest Dodge has a 48-52 front to rear weight distribution. Since Dodge can use the same cradle and parts front and rear, this will allow four wheel steering. This is where I said earlier that crowd walk from the GMC Hummer will be an option. Lexus, Audi, Porsche, Mercedes, and Lamborghini are all companies that use this system on cars of different sizes. So we will see a tighter turning radius and better handling on a variety of vehicles like the Cuda, the Challenger, the Durango, and the Grand Cherokee. Now this patent looks to target unibody vehicles but I'm sure Solanders will have a version that works with body on frame models, such as the Ram 1500, the HD trucks, the TRX, and the Wagoneer models. Now let's get to the Cheetah launch mode. This is how Tesla optimizes the car for launches. It drops the nose, adjusts dampening to allow for quicker launches, and optimizes the batteries. This is how you get that 2 seconds 0 to 60 time that Solanders is shooting for. We currently have a launch mode in the Hellcat equipped vehicles. But this new mode will go above and beyond to a lot more than what we currently have. I don't have an idea what this mode will be called, but Tesla does have a lot of fun with his ludicrous mode. And even the Hummer EV has fun with his launch mode name, Watts of Freedom. And let me know down in the comments what you think Dodge's launch mode should be called. I'm going to go and throw my hat in the ring and say it should be called Stage Hypersonic and a Gladded Transport. Just saying. But this launch mode will be activated by electronic shots with electronic actuators. I talked about it in my videos last year, but Sorcha told me Dodge was working with Bill Stain on a new suspension on a vehicle last year, and they were testing inside one of the plant's indoor test tracks when they're being shuttled because of part shortages. This electronic shock or strut, or whatever they want to call it, will be similar to a GM's magnetic rod control system where it can quickly adapt in real time to provide the best possible ride being controlled by its own ECU. Now this system will actually have two devices per axle with one mounted to the linkage for the upper control arm then you get another pair of actuators, bigger ones, attached to the lower control arms via cantilever linkage. We will have leaf springs that will tie together your left and right upper control arms with electronic actuators at both ends. And then you'll see a sway bar also helping out in the suspension setup. And finally, rack and pain for the forward steering option. With these eight electronic suspension devices, four in the front and four in the rear, this should be the best feeling and handling system that we ever experienced from a Dodge product. With the front and rear cradle designed to be the same, this opens the door that Dodge can make a quad motor vehicle. I put up here on the screen all the possible horsepower numbers for these vehicles that I posted last July. I'll also say that Dodge could software limited EVs in order to charge you in the future to unlock more horsepower range and even features like self-driving. Part of Slanter's business model going forward is for you to buy software and subscriptions in order for them to get more profit out of you just like their competitors Tesla and GM does. If the past was about increasing margins by moving customers north in hardware and trim levels, our future is about offering customers software-based services. Here are a few examples. Dodge is developing performance upgrades, launching actually next week, including driver-tunable software that will deliver an immediate horsepower boost while retaining the car's emissions compliance. Just saying. And the last talker point before I close this long video off is maintenance. The cradle system is designed to unbolt from the unibody and drop down in order for you to service these cradles. And you will have to do this because most of the stuff you need to get to is on top of the cradle. The upper actuators are mounted up top. The leaf springs mounted up top. The brakes are mounted inside the cradle attached to the EV motors. So you can't just take your wheel off and change your brakes. You have to jack the vehicle up and get underneath it, and hopefully you'll be able to service the calipers. And even on that second suspension I talk about with the struts, those are running through the middle of the cradle. So can you get to those struts if you take the wheel off to actually change those out if you want to go aftermarket? But I guess we'll find out soon. Just saying. And that's it for this video, guys. Dodge hasn't given us an official unveiling date, but I've said in other videos that it makes sense for them to unveil this new EV that had the suspension on April 11th which will be the five year anniversary of the Demon. 
the previous fastest dodge ever. So let me know what you guys think about the new suspension and its features like four wheel steering, cheetah launch mode, this advanced axle suspension. My only gripe is that seven years into the Hellcat platform and we got nothing like this brand new state of art suspension, but the EVs get this in year one, which doesn't make any sense to me. But that's just me. If you haven't already done so, leave this video a like to help it out. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And until the next video, I'm out.